All right, so starting out from the back, end goal is obviously going to be Matt Turner. After his master class on Friday, there's no reason not to start him for this game. Saudi Arabia is a pretty good team, so I do expect Matt Turner to have to make a few saves throughout this game. My left back and right back are going to be Serginho Dest and Joe Scali. Sam Bynes didn't really have a great game on Friday, and we've seen Serginho Dest play on the left-hand side before, and I think he's better on the left than Joe Scali is. Scali has exclusively played as a left back for the U.S., but I think he's much better as an entire player on the right. So I want to see if he can get an opportunity on the right because we've seen plenty of DeAndre Yedlin and then Reggie Cannon is also out of this game because of an injury picked up in that Japan game. The center back pairing should be Mark McKenzie and Walker Zimmerman. Now Walker Zimmerman didn't really have a great game on Friday against Japan, but he's a leader in this defense and going into the World Cup he's going to be starting. So there's no reason at least not to play him in this game. And then it's between Eric Palmer Brown and Mark McKenzie. I don't see a reason to start Aaron Long whatsoever in this game. I think Mark McKenzie in his opportunity on Friday wasn't great, but he was one of the brighter spots on the team. I think he was fine playing out of the back. Had only one or two bad giveaways, and defensively he was pretty fine. So I want to get, see if he can get more than 60 minutes in this game and see, see what he looks like. Because I think Saudi Arabia is going to be a team. Not necessarily parks the bus, but they'll sit back deeper and try and soak up pressure. So I do want to see what Mark McKenzie does look like in a buildup like that. And moving on to the midfield, at the 6, it's obviously going to be Tyler Adams. He did have a pretty bad game on Friday against Japan, but heading into the World Cup, he is the only 6 that is capable of starting. There's no other depth options that could even replace him. So let's see if we can put him out in the field and have a bounce-back performance. He's still very important in the way that we press and when we try and build out of the back. My 8s are going to be Weston McKinney and Giovanni Reyna. Now, Weston McKinney did have a pretty bad game on Friday as well against Japan. But he's been one of the better players for us just for a while now. And there's no reason to replace Weston or Kenny or anything. He just can't do it. That game might have just been a one-off. So give him another opportunity. We're just trying to play our best team right before the World Cup rolls around. Just to get some reps and experience. And at my other rate, I want it to be Gio Reyna. But play him a little bit higher. So I have Weston McKinney sit a little bit deeper. Almost in a double pivot. Because we really struggle in the build-up phase. Having a singular six asked to distribute the ball. And that's not Tyler Adams' main skill set so i have west mckinney alongside uh tyler adams just to help in the build them and kind of just move the ball so we don't lose it and then we turn it over and they can just attack us and we're on our heels and then Giorena put him in his best position because Eunice musa is out of this camp just see what he looks like in the midfield right before the world cup now i don't want him to play a whole 90 minutes because he's still coming off from a long-term injury so maybe a half or even 60 minutes would suit him well in this game I just don't really want to see him on the right wing for this game. I think it's better to put Aronson on the wing and Rain in the midfield. I think there's just more talent. You can get more out of the two, uh, putting Rain in the midfield and Brendan Aronson on the wing. And moving on to our front three, we have Christian Pulisic, Brendan Aronson, and Ricardo Pepe. Now, Greg Berhalter in his press conference today did reveal that both Pulisic and Ricardo Pepe are going to be starting in this game. Happy for Pulisic to be back after missing Friday's game because of a small knock. So I want to see him at least try and go the distance. Um, Ricardo Pepe, I would have liked to start Josh Sargent instead, give him an opportunity with a better team on the field, put him up top. But again, Ricardo Pepe, he's played well for the U.S. in the past, so I don't completely hate it. But I would like to see Josh Sargent at least come off the bench for the last 30 minutes or even the second half. It doesn't really matter. And then Brendan Aronson on the right. Again, I'd rather start Brendan Aronson over Paul Ariola. Brendan Aronson did go the distance of full 90 minutes against Japan, so it wouldn't surprise me for it to be a guy like Paul Ariola or Jordan Morris, but I think Brendan Aronson should be on the wing. He's very good in the press. All right on the half turn, and still want to play Gio Reyna in the midfield to be a lock picker guy who can just play on the turn. Because Saudi Arabia is a team, they're not necessarily going to park the bus, but they're going to sit a little bit deeper. They're not going to press as nearly as much as Japan. So having Gio Reyna be that creative force in the midfield with Brendan Aronson to the side, he'll also cut inside as well and play in the half space. But I really don't mind the front three of Pulisic, Pepe, and Brennan Aronson. But I do want to see Josh Sargent come off the bench in the second half or at halftime. So moving on to a full view of the team that I want to see tomorrow against Saudi Arabia. In goal is Matt Turner, a center back pairing of Mark McKenzie and a Walker Zimmerman. I want to see how they do in the build-up phase in the game. Because I expect Saudi Arabia to be playing a lot deeper than Japan did. Serginho Dest at left back and Joe Scali on the right. I don't really want to see DeAndre Yedlin. So give Joe Scali this opportunity to play on his right in his better position and see if he can make that play to guitar based off this performance. Tyler Adams as my 6th, Weston McKinney as an 8, but might be playing a little bit deeper to help in the build-up phase of the game and be able to accommodate for Giorena playing in front of him. 
So with that, Reyna is an 8, playing more as of a 10. Being able to see the ball in advanced space is just being able to have the freedom to dribble and facilitate the entire game. And being able to combine with the front three as well. And that front three is Christian Pulisic and Ricardo Pepe, who are already confirmed to be starting tomorrow by Greg Berhalter. And then I have Brendan Aronson on the right wing. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This game against Saudi Arabia is going to be a very good game. It'll be our last curtain call before the actual World Cup rolls around. It's pretty crazy to think that we're now under two months from lining up against Wales in the very first World Cup game. But overall, I just want to see some improvements from the game we saw on Friday. In fact, a lot of improvements. Just fix some things heading into that World Cup. And I think this team on the field could really give us the best chance of winning and just playing a good brand of soccer. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And make sure to leave those comments down below and let me know what your preferred starting 11 would be for this game. But that's going to do it, and I will see you guys next time.